currently 6.14 a.m. We're just walking the streets with our, with our doona. last minute donations. Uh, we literally just rolled out of bed and, and now we're just going to generously donate most of it to charity. <laughs> uh, it's a nice day here, finally. Uh, yeah, see you at the bin. How is it? Mm. Not bad, actually. <laughs> One last look around our flat. Did many a yoga class from right here. baked many a vegan treat from right here. about to board a flight to Eau Claire, Wisconsin. We did it. I can't see you flapping. There we go. Very exciting. Last leg. It's been quite a long day. Very much looking forward to a drink and something to eat. A big drink. A big drink and a big salad. A big old American salad.
Well, here we are. I'm driving a vehicle. Look, she's on the left-hand side of the car. What am I doing over here driving? We're on the right-hand side of the road. What is this wheel doing here? Whoa. Yes, yeah, so we've just Focus. departed the airport now and heading towards our hotel for a couple of nights. And we said hello to Sarah's family who are driving in that vehicle ahead of us right now. And we are very hungry and <laughs> both probably in need of a shower. Yes, shower. And and to burn our clothes. I hugged my sister today for the first time. And we got some flowers. There you go. Hello and welcome to Eau Claire, Wisconsin, USA. We do have a bit of a story to tell about how we got here. We largely relied on uh, help from United staff and faith in the gods and the universe, <laughs> <laughs> old and the new. And uh, yeah, somehow we managed to get through okay. We went to the baggage check-in uh, which was the first port of call. Uh, we had to take out our COVID tests and show them uh, as being negative. And then we went to the next step in the process, which was a passport check. Uh, I can't remember if we had to show our COVID tests again, but anyway. So yeah, they took one look at his Aussie passport and no green card and sent us straight to the immigration officer. Yeah, who was just some guy standing uh, in the middle of uh, checkout lounge with a notepad, a mobile phone, and a small pedestal thing that he was standing at. Not really a pedestal. In the middle of like the desk. Delta check-in too, so you couldn't tell like who was a Delta representative, and then this one immigration yes. guy. Yes. The family that he spoke to next was uh, it was pretty large. It was about seven or eight people, I think. Um, and from what I overheard, uh, he was telling them that some of them were able to travel to the United States, but others would not. And I think a couple of the kids weren't allowed to. Uh, so he <laughs> pretty much explained to them that they would need to email the US Embassy in London uh, and get some kind of form or something to pro progress their uh, travel into the States. Uh, so that didn't sound very good. And the next guy ahead of us was just a single guy. Um, I think he was flying to the States to meet his wife. I think he had a marriage certificate with him. I didn't quite mm -hmm. catch it, but um, uh, so he went through the same thing, got his, all his details noted down. And, and there was some issue with his Esther or something. So he said uh, he was told to wait 15 minutes or something. So yeah, finally came to us and by this stage, the line behind us had like tripled. Um, so I'm glad we got there when we did. Uh, and they kept saying, they kept adding people to the queue and saying like, it won't be long, it won't be long. Yeah. And I'm like, it's gonna be a long time. Still <laughs> just this one guy just getting through yeah. whatever he could do. But um, pretty much all he did was check my passport, asked me a few questions, uh, asked, yeah, we're traveling on an Esther, when I was planning on leaving the States. Uh, he had a look at our wedding certificate just to make sure that it was uh, that was the reason why we we're going. Uh, he went off with our passports and his little notepad and <laughs> mobile phone and went through all that again, uh, and then came over um, and basically said, "You can go back to baggage check in, uh, tell them that I've cleared you, whatever the hell that meant." <laughs> back to the uh, baggage check. Back to getting our COVID tests re-examined yep, and we rechecked. Yeah, again. Yep. yep, and, and then, then back to the, a gay agent, this time a different one, um, who was going to check us in and get us our boarding passes and take our bags and whatnot. And then we ran into another um, bit of a wait as she had to call to get um, approval for Marcus. And it was kind of cute because when she called the States, unite someone on United's end, she had to call and she said, London calling. <laughs> That's right. She said, <laughs> London calling here. Yeah. Mind you, it was like 2 a.m. in the U.S. at yeah. this time. And it went to an automated response, first of all. So I was standing there thinking, oh, God, this could take forever. And it kind of did. We yeah, were standing there for a while. Another yeah. 15 or 20 minutes, I think. Anyway, so apparently that cleared me as well for a second time. <laughs> So I'm not sure what the first guy actually did, uh, apart from tell us that we were cleared. But anyway, it got cleared again. Uh, so our, we said goodbye to our bags and they sailed away. 
the next stage we went to was security um, to get our bags checked and everything. Of course, you know, I waltzed through, but then someone else didn't get to waltz straight through. Yeah, so the screen basically flashed up red and said, go through the uh, assistance gate. So looked across the assistant thing and there was a queue for that as well. So I thought, oh. he waved to Sarah and said, just keep going. <laughs> I know, I was like, there's no way I am losing sight of you in this airport during this. And so I stood on the other side of the check-in with this little kid who was waiting for his dad that had to go in the queue too. So it was like the waiting area for the families that made it through and then the ones that had to go through the extra check. What happened when you got to the check? So there was about probably a dozen people in front of the queue and that moved pretty quickly. All she, all she was doing was just checking passport and against the name on the boarding pass, oh. I think. So when I got there, yeah, she just checked it. She had to scan it a couple of times. Um, but anyway, it waved me through, thankfully. Um, so that was another, <laughs> that was what, the third check that I had to have. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, we just went through security and that felt like a breeze. Security, to yeah, else. nothing <laughs> happened weird there. No bags yeah. were pulled aside, nothing. We yeah. just went, I was, I was like, okay, it's easy Straight street through. from here on out, right? From previous experience, um, we'd known which part of the terminal that the United flight was probably going to go to. So we thought, oh, well, let's just wander over there now. <laughs> Um, because we were getting fairly close to boarding. I think boarding started about 9 a.m. Um, by that stage. So, yeah, we just wanted to head over there and grab some food and sit down and enjoy our... Yeah, have a enjoy nice our, Yeah, have a bit of a rest after, rest. yeah, thinking that we were finally through everything and cleared and that we were going to fly to the States. Yeah. This was the first time I flew standby in a while, so I wasn't accustomed to their new auto assignment of seats. Um, and... I was accustomed to how it worked before, where you either had to go to the gate agent or they'd assign you your final seat straight away. Sarah went and spoke to someone uh, when we got to the gate, and I think he just said, we'll find The seat thing was it. fine. The yeah. seat thing was no problem. Yep, so we just sat down as you would normally do with flying standby and wait for your name to be called and go up and have your seat assigned or whatever. So this is us sitting. Uh, at the gate, we can see the plane out the window. <laughs> People are boarding, and we're thinking, right, I just need a seat assigned, and then we get on the plane. Yeah, I thought they were calling him up just for his assignment. Yeah, they called me up, uh, went through passport, boarding pass, uh, asked me all the details about what my visa, what's my green card, all this stuff. And oh, I'm traveling by an Esther. Oh, an Esther. Oh, well, that's okay. Can you tell me the address? So I had to give her the address where we were staying in the States. Um, three times I think I had to give her the address. Oh, and system... I had to give it once, so oh, four. four times. So the system just wasn't accepting me as a passenger, so I don't know what the other two people that updated the system had to do, but I don't know, different systems or they went to, to each other or something. I think the more senior person started talking to me about uh, the whole Esther issue. She basically said, we're going to try and get you on this flight, but she recommended that we book a ticket out of the States. So when we arrive in the US, um, we've got something to show the customs officer. Otherwise we might get turned back or I might get turned back. Sarah jumped into <laughs> action mode with the laptop out and jumped on my to laptop. Uh, yeah, the United website and booked me on a flight for the 1st of September to Sydney. Um, bon voyage. Yeah, but none of her cards were working. She went through oh. about <laughs> three or four different credit cards to pay for this thing. I um, remember at one point I was just like, I can't do this. I've had no tea. I've had no sustenance. I'm like trying to like press submit on this form and I had to, oh my goodness. It yeah. was just one of those moments where nothing was working. And mind you, by this time, everyone else had boarded. So yeah. we were the only people sitting in the lounge. While Sarah was doing that, I was talking to them, uh, giving them my address again for the US. Uh, and then basically I just went and sat down next to Sarah and we were just like, Ooh, there's nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. We were watching these two United staff, just like both of them were like having my passport and both of them were trying to input it into the system. And, uh, you know, we're just sitting there <laughs> wondering what's going to happen. We're starting to think about, okay, if we don't get on this flight, what are we going to do? <laughs> so yeah, finally they called us up and basically it sounded like it was it. Um, and they, <laughs> they pretty much asked Sarah. Uh, yeah. They asked if, me if I would go without him and yeah. And then, I, yeah. yeah, and then they asked if we had check baggage on the plane, to which we said yes. Um, so I think it 
start felt like that stage that about to tell us that we're not going to get on a plane. And a split second later, they said, okay, you're on. So <laughs> a big shout out to those gate agents at United Flight 928. Didn't catch their names, but they were classy yeah. gals and they, they, they helped it. us out. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we would have had to go through all that process yeah, again oh the gosh, following yeah. day or whenever we came back again. So, so, I mean, anyway. we, we had a pretty complicated case, I'd say, in oh. comparative to some other people that may have been caught before that in the process and had a firm no. Our, we had standby travel, we had Anesta, we had someone, you know, on an Australian passport getting into the States with them, you know, their spouse being their waiver, kind of. So, yeah, there was a lot of components that could have gone wrong, and it seemed like some of them almost did. So yeah, all of a sudden we were just on our way to Chicago and yep. um, had, you know, seven, eight hours to kind of decompress uh, from that experience, not knowing what was going to greet us in Chicago um, and how that experience was going to go. I definitely had some anxiety, <laughs> of course, after that, what was going to happen when we go through customs and immigration in Chicago. But we landed in Chicago O'Hare. Um, got off the plane and into a massive queue to go through customs and immigration. Fortunately, we arrived about 20 minutes early, so we had a good three hours or so before our connecting flight. Um, so it wasn't too much of a stress, but it was a lot of standing in queues that day already. So. Yeah, it was so, so surreal to be back in the States, but first we were just focused on getting, you know, what was gonna happen at security and uh, customs. And I'm like, okay, here's our stuff. What kind of questions are you gonna shoot at us? I don't even think he asked like, how long are you staying? Yeah, how long am I staying? Didn't where ask me I, anything. Oh yeah, no. Didn't even we... say like, welcome home or anything. <laughs> Did he ask where we were staying? I don't think he even no. asked that. No. no. And then it was just, uh, I took my photo and my fingerprints, which is standard yeah. stuff. Um, and then said, yeah, you're free mm -hmm. to go. Yeah, so we breezed through and grabbed our bags and jumped on the shuttle bus uh, to take us to the domestic terminal. The gate wasn't too far away from where we needed to be, so we had a bit of time to uh, just have a little bit of a walk around and a sit down before we got on our tiny little plane. Tiny little to plane Eau to Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. And we landed in Eau Claire and that was just so lovely in so many different ways just to kind of be here. And reunited with yes. your family. And I, I got to reunite briefly with my um, sister, my brother-in-law and my two nieces. And um, that was just a really beautiful moment. Okay. It was a moment, you know, you just don't forget. So, um, so yeah, that was a wonderful thing after a year and a half of being away and a global pandemic in the mix. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's good to be here. This is our first time recording with our new GoPro, Hero 9, and it's still going. we are learning. Yes. Forget the tea, I'm going to the gate. Port of call. Yes. That sounds real fancy. Thank you. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs>